Hi, welcome to Digital Principles and System Design. In this video lecture, let's discuss about the simplification of Boolean expressions using Queen Maclachsky method. Let's now try to simplify the Boolean expression f of a, b, c, d with min terms 0, 3, 5, 6, 7, 10, 12, 13 with don't care terms to be don't care mean terms to be 2, 9 and 15. Now the first step with Queen Maclachsky is that we write the binary equivalent of each of the mean term and don't care and this is optional right don't care is optional. So if it is given we also include the don't care with number of bits equal to the number of input variable say for example 0 I have to represent like 0, 0, 0, 0 for each of the input variables. So the number of bits we use to represent each of the min term or the tone care term will be equal to the number of input variables. So we have listed out all the uh, min terms and the tone cares given here and we have written the binary equivalent of them. And I have highlighted the don't care terms but it is not necessary that we have to differentiate the don't care min terms with the min terms of the function till the last step. So 0 we have represented as 0 0 0 0 and 2 is the don't care term so we have represented 0 0 1 0 and 3 okay 5 we have written both the min terms and the don't care terms in the ascending order. The next step is to group the min terms and the don't cares which we have written in the step 1 based on the number of ones. Say for example group 0 will have only the min terms and the don't care terms which do not have any ones that is the number of ones is 0. So since we have 0 uh, in our problem this will appear as group 0 which is 0 which we have represented as G, G0 and G1 will be the min terms and the don't care terms which have only one one in their binary representation. So here we have 2 which is 0 0 1 0 so this is the next group and the third group is number of once in the binary representation to be 2. So we have 3 which have 2 ones here and 5 we have 2 ones, 6, 9, 10 and 12. Okay, Both have 2 ones in their binary representation and the next group we have 3 ones in their binary representation and finally uh, the last group has four ones in their binary representation. The next step is to merge the min terms and the don't care terms from adjacent group and how do we merge? We merge only those min terms which differ by at most one bit position and we call this as the implicant table and when we merge we get a new implicant prime implicant table. And let's see how to do that. When we consider G0 and G1, G0 has 0 and this representation is this one and G1 has 2 which is 0, 0, 1, 0. And when we consider these two terms, both of them differ only by the bit position C. Otherwise, both are same. So we will merge these two together and write it as a new group which is G non dash and write this is we are combining 0 and 2 and with that whatever is common we write it as such and whichever is varying we put a, a dash there okay representing that I can omit this literal in the final expression and don't forget to mark these two cells with the tick mark meaning that we have included in some um, group okay that is we have merged these two min terms using some group and then we follow this 
step with next two group that is G1 and G2. G1 has two and G2 has these many terms and we have to compare two against all these terms and check how many bit positions are varying. If there is some min term which is varying by only one bit position then we have to merge them. Consider 2 and 3. They differ only by this bit position D. Okay, so we can write it as 2 comma 3 and we write it write the merge term as 0 0 1 dash and similarly 2 and 6 we have the variation only in this term b because here it is 0 here it is 1 otherwise it is the same so we get 0 dash 1 0 okay that is what we have written as 0 dash 1 0 okay and similarly 2 and 10 we have the difference only in this term so we have dash in the uh, a term and then we have 0 1 0 represented here then we have to find the merge with this g2 and g3 okay we have to compare all the elements of g2 with all the elements of g3 we have to be little bit careful when doing this one when we miss some of these groups then we might end up with wrong result and don't forget to put this tick mark as soon as i use this 2 and 3 i have to put a tick mark here and then we have used 2 and 6 then i'll put a tick mark here and then uh, so 2 and 3 so we have to put a tick mark here 2 and 6 we have to put a tick mark here and then 2 and 10 we have used we have to put a tick mark here then we have to compare these uh, g2 with g3 it's uh, necessary to compare all the cells here with this one okay it's um, it's not that i ha i need not use the cells which are already marked for merge okay we can sometimes reuse these min terms to merge with uh, the next uh, group as well so when we find like that we get, get 3 and 7 to form a group although 3 has been already combined with some other uh, min terms so we get 3 and 7 and the difference is only in the term b so we get 0 uh, the difference is in b so we get a dash here and then one more and we put a tick mark in 7 and 3 is already marked and 5 and 7 5 we have in marked 7 we have already marked so 5 and 7 whichever bit position is changing here it is changing right so in c we get a dash otherwise we get 0 1 dash 1 0 1 dash 1 okay and we put a tick mark in 5 and 7 is already marked and then the next main term merge will be with the 6 and 7 so we have to find all such combinations and we find that we get these many merge in the new prime implicant table and finally we will merge G3 with G4 and we have to put a tick mark whenever we merge some min term to form a new group in the uh, or a new entry in, a, uh, in the new prime implicant table. Hope this table is now completely visible. Okay, we have to work out a little bit and we have to be a little bit careful. I have to compare the elements of each group with the next group, adjacent group. And we have to find out the min terms which are varying by only one bit. Okay, say for example, when we consider 7 and 15, there is change only in A. So this will form a new group 7 and 15 and similarly 13 and 15 uh, they differ only in the bit C. So whichever bit is varying that bit will appear as a dash in the new prime implicant table. The rest of the elements will get their values. We have to repeat this procedure of merging the groups till no more merge is possible. Now we have to 
merge the group of G0 dash with G1 dash and we have to compare each of the min terms that we have here with the next block. Now we have 0, 0, dash 0 and even the dash should match okay and we cannot find any match for this one okay so we we did not tick this one consider the next block g1 g1 dash and g2 dash we have 2 3 here and we have 6 7 here consider the combinations we have 0 0 we have 0 that is matching we have 0 here and here 1 okay so this did not match okay and we have 1 here and we have dash here so rest of the 3 bits are matching except b okay so we can combine 2 3 and 6 7 and write 2 3 6 7 and write it as 0 dash 1 dash 0 dash 1 dash that's what we get and we tick this one and this one okay we tick this 2 3 and 6 7 okay sometimes this 2 3 6 7 combination can be got from other paths involved in this uh, implicant table say for example we have 2 6 here and 3 7 will appear here okay so when we merge these two things also 2 6 and 3 7 we are going to get the same uh, pattern of the min term here okay so we can we need not write it once again but uh, we should not forget to tick them see here 2 6 we have 0 and the dash is here and 1 in the third bit and there is a difference in the last bit so this is going to appear as a dash in the new prime implicant table and the rest of the patterns will appear as such that is 0 dash 1 dash okay that's what we have already got so we should not forget to tick these two terms as well because they also form the same min term and similarly we have to find out whether these these things are matching with any of these things and we find no more merges possible and we have to try we have to merge g2 dash with g3 dash and we find that 5 7 and 15 13 15 are differing only by one big position so we take this 5 7 and which bit position is varying it is in the MSB. Okay, so uh, the differing bit position is this one, so that will appear as a dash, and the rest of the bit combinations are 1 dash 1, and that is what we have written here. And similarly, here also 5, 7, and 13, 15, that we will take it, and these four combinations might have been found by other paths here as well. So say for example 513 is available here and 715 is available here so when we combine all these uh, four min terms we get 5 7 13 15 which is the same combination so we will tick these two uh, min terms as well and we find that no more combinations are possible so this is the new prime implicant table that we have got now we have we should try to combine g not double dash with g1 double dash and we see that they differ here they differ here so the number of bit position that is varying is more than one so we cannot merge these two min terms so we can stop merging stop the merging process now we can label from bottom to top okay so we will label this as a this as b that is what i have written here okay so this term we will label as a this term b and whichever term which is not marked for merge we will label them so this term 12 13 will appear as c and 13 uh, 9 13 will appear as d and 
210 will appear as E and finally we have 02 which is which we will represent using F. Now we will try to form something called essential prime implicant table which is the same table that we have got earlier okay which is A to F that is what we have listed here but here we have listed out all the min terms in the function okay 0 3 5 6 7 10 12 and 13 that is what we have listed out here we will not include the don't care terms this is the difference um, between the the uh, prime implicants or the min terms that we wanted to cover and the don't care don't care we do not include in the essential prime implicant table and now we have to find out which of these uh, implicants is covering which min term okay so 5 7 13 15 is covering 5 so we put a tick mark here 7 we put a tick mark here and then 13 we put a tick mark here and 15 is a don't care so we get only 3 ticks in the first row similarly if 2 3 6 7 we mark all the min terms corresponding to 3 6 7 because 2 is a don't care similarly we take 12 and 13 for this one 9 and 13 for this one and 9 is a don't care so a tick will not appear in, in this um, you know row for 9 and 2 and 10 2 is a don't care so we will have a tick mark here for 10 and similarly 0 and 2 we have only 0 in the function now we have to consider these ticks marks and whichever column has a single tick mark that we have to circle okay column 0 has only one tick mark similarly column 3 has a single tick mark column 5 again has a single tick mark then column 6 is also having a single tick mark then column 10 and column 12 now we have to mark the min terms corresponding to these circled um, min terms okay so we again, see a circle and mark the corresponding min term in the row okay so these star marks are going to form the essential prime implicants so along this first row we have this one 5 7 13 15 and along the second row we have circles so we mark this one and along the third row also we have a circle so we mark this as a essential prime implicant and this row do not have any uh, circled uh, main term so we will leave out this and, and this one has a circle so we mark 210 as a essential prime implicant and similarly 02 also acts as a prime implicant essential prime implicant because this has a circle this row has a circle now with this 5 7 13 15 okay how many uh, terms that we are covering here we are covering 5 7 and 13 only with prime implicants we are trying to find how many min terms in the problem we are able to cover so we just put a tick mark for 5 7 13 because 15 is a don't care similarly with the essential prime implicants we have to find out how many of them we are able to cover so with this one we are able to cover three so we put a tick mark here three six and seven and with this one we cover 12 and 13 and with this one we cover 10 and with the last one we are able to cover this zero with this particular problem we are able to cover all the min terms in the problem which we are trying to simplify using the essential prime implicants but this is not always the case sometimes some of the 
um, mean terms may not be covered by the essential prime implicants in that case we have to choose some a uh, non um, essential prime implicant from top to bottom because in the top we have the bigger block and while going down we have the smaller block okay and we have to find say for example suppose if 13 is not marked okay for example okay so in that case and this is not acting as a prime essential prime implicant say for example in that case okay i have to 13 is available here as well as here and we have one more um, you know representation for 13 so out of these three blocks which would i prefer to choose i would prefer to choose this one because 13 is in a bigger block okay so this is one way to choose uh, the uh, you know min terms which are not covered by the essential prime implicants and sometimes the same uh, implicant okay uh, the prime implicant can cover more than one element say for example uh, i haven't we, we are not able to cover 13 uh, 13 and uh, say for example which is here it is not repeating something it is not repeating 13 and 7 say 13 and 7 okay so instead of choosing any one of these three uh, these two things for 13 and choosing this and this for choosing this for 13 and this for 7 we would prefer to choose this one because 13 and 7 both appear here okay that is the number of min terms covered by a prime implicant should be more okay so that is another criteria we will use to choose this as a essential prime implicant and we mark it as a essential prime implicant now once we have got all these terms ticked okay so all the min terms in the problem should be covered by the start ones which are the essential prime implicants and if the essential prime implicants are not covering all the min terms we have to choose from non uh, essential prime implicants and include them also in the final result now the simplified expression will be so this is one prime implicant implicant in the final expression right so what is this 5 7 13 15 using the prime implicant table we have found this combination to be dash 1 dash 1 okay so a will not appear in the final simplified expression b will appear as such and c will not appear and d will appear so we'll get this 5 7 13 15 as b d okay so that is the first term the second term is a bar c okay and that is the second term and in between the essential prime implicants we have a r okay and here we have a b c bar okay that is what is the third term and this is not included in the final result and for this one we have b bar c d bar and that is what we have here and finally this one a bar b bar d bar okay and this is the result okay so this is the fine final simplified answer for this problem in the next video lecture let's discuss about the analysis procedure of combinational circuit and see what is combinational circuit thank you for watching this video